Hey, this is Flash Somebody at 20% off on the 11th of December, 2019. And we've been having a little technical difficulties tonight. So I'm off to a late start. It's about 15, 20 after the hour. I think it's 15 after. My clock is uh, three minutes faster than everybody else. So... I know how huh, Miss Mary's the button pusher around here, but tonight I'm going to take over and give it a shot. Yeah, This is Flash, 20% off, and we're going to say hi to the Real Liberty media bots and chatters out there in Radio Land. We got Barman Grimnir. Now, am I live? Can you hear me now? Boy, we've been through this a few times. Moose Girl, Miss Kate. Brackets, DC, uh, Asmo, Chloe, Chow Sedoni, Chloe, me, Gramsy, Ibe Don C, Meister Brown, Pox Fied, Pox Phone, Rain, RLM, Fluke, Rob Works, Rums, Vinny, Phantom, Beetle, Cyborg, Noodle, Dakota, Frumpy, Grummet, Guest 1157.9, Java Doctor 2, Kozu mm, Nensen Dubois Pox at Home Pwn Sauce Sock Puppet and Rain and Skittle and Rain. Wow <clears throat> my mind is already just a little shut tonight. This is uh had a little problem with my verbal gear. Had to get Grimner to come on here and bail me out of whatever I clicked off wrong. Some something went crazy. But anyway, tonight's program is going to be called If It Looks Like Cake, Must Be Cake, right? Because, you know, nobody would ever make something, and make it look all like a cake, and then sell it to you. And once you got it, you go, wow, that sure looked like a cake when I bought it. Wonder what happened. Why, it's made out of something besides cake. <laughs> Rob works. Yeah, well, that's okay. Um, no, I decided to do this particular p format by myself because in the beginning it was such a big deal to do the radio. Now over the time, I don't know, it's like talking to myself while I'm in the bathroom. I don't, you know, it doesn't matter. <laughs> if I do, nobody's there to hear it beside me. And if I don't, it's just in my head, just like everything else. Anyway, lots of people have different ways to look at the same damn thing, which is what diversity is supposed to be about, but they've managed to fuck that all up and throw race and color, and uh, I think it's more of a cultural thing, not not a let's, let's throw it all at the wall and see what sticks. Anyway. That goes to the topic, you know, if it looks like cake, people are just going to assume what they see is what something is. And with all this modern technology, it's gotten way easier to trick us, not harder to trick us. Because I think we see so much bullshit on the TV set, you know, growing up, then you got internet, and then you see more bullshit. So your mind is already set to... And it's all bullshit. But if you live in that mindset, you end up at the dork table with me on Saturdays. And it's not a popular place to be when, you know, everybody else believes in all this stuff and you don't. And I'm to the point where um, it's so, I guess the word is disappointing. You know, there's this uproar going on in France right now. Now, the news is pumping it up, and I mean by the internet news that I get. Whatever comes off of Mines or YouTube. For YouTube's as far as to mainstream as I'm willing to go. But I try to stick to the smaller things. BitChute, Spreaker, um, RLM. You know, Real Liberty Media has always got something. RealLiberty.org. There's good links there to 
take a look and see what the world's doing. But anyhow, this thing's got my attention because I'm in Denmark and it's closer. But politically, it might as well be, the French might as well be on the moon. It doesn't, it's not going to bother us here where we are. Denmark didn't join the European Union. A lot of people don't understand that though, but <laughs> the English did and kept the pound. The Danish didn't and kept the kroner. Now, it's it's my understanding that if you have a central bank, you're playing with borrowed money any damn way, so it doesn't really matter. <laughs> ah, puff it a puff it a pass, pass. That's bubbler for you. Rob Works is thinking of us <clears throat> at the... Uh, appropriate time according to uh, other people but i think any time is a time to indulge you know if you got a vice fuck it nobody's perfect well except for um, donald trump nancy pelosi and the queen of england those three are very perfect they're special too and they've got some support from people. I don't, I don't even get it. I and mean, not one of those three does anything to you know f to better anybody but their self or their inner circle. Yet the public thinks they're wonderful. They make all my decisions for me so that I'm safe. I mean, you. We are talking about a group of people that can't decide one way or the other to build a fucking wall i mean how hard could it be you go to your city council and you say council i want to build a wall and they'll go yes or no but when it comes to government at the higher level of governments these people have conned everybody into thinking that you know because it's such an important decision to make it it needs a lot of consideration now well, either you build the fucking thing or you don't but in politics that's not how things work and it's, so if you're going to separate reality you know the real world reality from politics in the first place then why are you bothering with the politics at all and there you go there's that non-popular side because you're showing me a cake but I smell a bowl of shit. And I'm not, like, it's not a popular point of perspective. Hey, Cowboy Tech just showed up. How you doing, Cowboy? You know, because we got this thing, beside all this freaking law nonsense, because the law is just a bunch of shit. People, people think it matters. It doesn't matter. But we have an instinct thing that works for us you know it keeps you out of trouble and if you're in trouble you probably don't have the decency to you know behave yourself and you got i don't know authoritad <laughs> because because what the fuck is the difference if you, somebody does a crime you know according to the law but the law does not catch that criminal doing the crime well when, then what's the point you know they're not really doing much of anything so what they did was they figured out how to use driving as a foundation to do all this other shady shit it's turned into asset forfeiture over the years by the way for all you voters that don't know trump loves the asset forfeiture he wants to continue asset forfeiture because i guess he's in the right club and his group will never be uh under investigation in that fashion you can investigate trump all day and all night but you won't be for he won't be forfeiting any of his uh, assets <laughs> you'll see it's like the best crooks have the best positions in you know in this game the game where it looks like a cake but sure doesn't smell like a cake so how many times do we get fooled by the cake before we start becoming cynical? And then every time you see a cake, you think, hey, now I've seen this before. This can't be a cake. And the confusion just kind of um, 
well, how would you, it's got not, not a positive effect to it at all, but at least if you're suspicious of the stuff that in the end always seems to turn out to be a bunch of crap, um, <laughs> well, I don't know. I read the chat just as I was finishing that sentence and completely blank. Let's talk to the folks in the RLM. And the, the radio and the, time, the chat are not in synchronization. So we're like a minute behind each other. One is first and then the other. And I always screw it up when I try to explain it. It's not my strong suit, and I know left from right, but I, this part <laughs> it always tricks me. Anyway. So we've got Grimner and Cowboy Tech popped up, and uh, they're hearing stone voices. Mm. And then Rob's correcting me on, it's not law enforcement, it's revenue generation. I know that, Rob. But then again, that's one of those labels that when you say it out loud, people just go, I don't want to hear that. The police are there to protect me. And I don't know what to tell people. They have no clue. If if you're out there in the real world, the real breathing, interacting with police, driving a car, going to work, any kind of routine, and you haven't engaged the police yet, I'd be amazed. I mean, fuck, they give you a ticket for looking at them funny. If you look at them, you're... Maybe they're making them afraid for their life. Because, you know, just like them, if it looks like a cake, yeah, maybe there's a reason to stop and interrupt your day to see what you're up to. And I just had a big thing go off. What was that blank? I wonder if I did something here. Anyway, so I felt like ranting about mm, this, that, and the other. And... I think my focus tonight is how things are, you know, you're told one thing. And then when you grow up or live a little longer, you finally find out that, well, they had the dates right, you know, or maybe a couple of the names were right, but all the bullshit in the middle, total crap. Let's start out with your rights. I've come to the decision in my life that rights is just a bunch of shit. There are no fucking rights. There were no rights. It was all just a story to tell you and prepare you for when they took them away from you for your safety. Because if you didn't have this thought in your head in the first place, that you had something, what would there be to take away? (laughs) I was reading on mine's I had a very active day over on mines people were um, spend a little time bantering with me and whatnot and the disagreements that opinions political or religious opinions bring out of other people you know it's just fascinating to me how we can all look at the same damn thing And there's little splintered groups. This group sees it like that. That group sees it like this. You know, whatever the, uh, I guess, the cake is to them. And it's it's not good or bad. It's just, uh, it's like a color, you know. The way I see it, it might not even be the way it truly is. Yeah, no, what was that? Something went bells ringing. Oh, man, I got my poker side open up probably made some money <laughs> i'm kidding i have no idea what that bill was scared the shit out of me but that was a while ago i've grown since those days rob mm. but let's see where where do you begin you know i'm i'm a little older than some folk and not as old as other folk but i'm over the middle line I'm leaning towards the end (laughs) at my age. I'm over the halfway point. But then I thought that when I was 20. So hmm, who knows? Maybe Circle just put me in a closet and keep me alive with tubes or something. 
we'll see what the future brings. Oh, hey, and I got some advice for people out there in the, the uh, real world that pick up this crazy show I do on the radio. Don't get too stuck on research. I've thought about that, and, and the reason I bring it back up is I was thinking off the cuff about the 100th monkey, and then I heard another guy, Jerry, over on BitChute, and he was talking about the same exact idea, and he took it further. He went to the writer that wrote the uh, the report about the monkeys, and he, he found him to be uh, a suspicious writer, and that raises doubt. Now, whether he's telling the truth or not is the issue, but who told him? <laughs> so, you know, if it looks like a cake, it must be a cake. So I guess what I'm trying to get to is is how just depends on your mood sometimes. How you look at a situation and the light it's directed at and how the words are used to, to explain it to you. And then you see the thing in the light that the person telling you wants you to see it in. And then, dang, you agree. And all of a sudden, the two of you tra la la off into the sunset in agreement because you agreed and the world is right. Well, maybe that's just a bunch of bullshit, you know. Um, and I'm not saying that we should all be arguing and spitting in each other's eye every day. I just mean... I believe that opposition to uh, whatever the mainstream believes is part of the game. It's an expected part of the game. Nobody's surprised, hey, there's opposition. Where did that come from? There's opposition. It's de in the design. So I come up with... I was listening to this other guy for a bit. When I first got on the internet, what is his name? Fresco. And he's a very controlling um, personality. And he's got, you know, good intentions. And those people are usually very violent. But this guy's like a pacifist. And, but he wants to control the environment that, the, you know, he lives in. Wow. I mean, the buildings are, they all look alike. There's no individuality left. It's just... Do it the right way, period. So he's he's got the right idea to a degree, but he cuts out the individual and freedom to get there, which is, seems to be the goal of government. You know? If you don't go along with the group, there's something wrong with you. You're broken. You need a doctor. You need medicine. You need therapy. You need this new deodorant, something, you know, <laughs> it's always something. But I think it's the design of the social game that we play, where no matter what you do, it's never right. They change the freaking rules halfway through the game you're playing, and then they don't tell you that until the game's been judged against you. So, eh. Who wants to be involved in something like that? Well, nobody so what I realized, I was just scammed. You know, America, bullshit. England, more bullshit. Canada, Scotland, Denmark, Mexico, China, Russia, Portugal, Argentina. I mean, fucking name it. This stuff is all... It's a, it looks like a cake, but I'm telling you, man... It ain't no cake. But the sad thing is, it could be a cake. But we're just fed all this rubbish, you know, billionaires. and It's glamorous to, to hoard and, and make excessive uh, profits off of your investments. And, ooh, look at him. He has a, a floor on the 59th floor. To me, it's a stupid, but I I have a I suppose a less selfish outlook on what success truly is. I don't think you can really show other people what your success is. I think that's kind of a personal thing, and the flaunting. If you didn't have you know uh, 
trinkets and flashy and a bunch of numbers, if you didn't make it look like a cake and you showed people what something truly was, I don't think they'd want it. That's so that the system has learned how to develop the people watching to absorb the shit they're putting out there. And it works. And it works really good. I even saw this horrible film a couple of years ago called The Purge. Right? And it was the media's version of what anarchy is. It was just complete stupidity that for so many hours you just run rampant and murder people in the street for no reason. Just ignorant shit. When anarchy is do no harm and leave me alone. You know, come come to me and we have a problem. Leave me alone, we have no problem. That's anarchy. It's not threatening, it's not violent, it's just fuck, for fuck's sake. Why do you always have to be in my business with your shit? And my decision on that answer to that question, it's all financial. So if you don't have any money for them to chase after, then you don't they don't give a shit about you, one way or the other. So, what I figured out was, if you live by a simple, basic foundation of rules, so to speak, you know, eh, anarchists with rules, well, it might sound the opposite, but it's really not. They're more like principles, you know, I don't live in a, a foundation based on bullshit and lies and stories, and my life, my physical life is, uh, as real as it could be, okay? I do not murder other people. I, you know, I don't find violence. I, I avoid confrontations. Life is peaceful. And the last thing, because it's not legal in this here part of the, you know, world yet, blah, 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 uh, grow hemp. But there's still, um, there's a faction of people that really have not, they don't take this, uh, the hemp prohibition seriously to the level of, you know, if you're smoking in the privacy of your own house and you're not walking down the street with a four-year-old smoking it, you're probably not going to be bothered, <laughs> you know, but if you're, if you're so selfish that you don't care where you are and what you're doing, when you do what, what it is you're doing, well, society's going to frown on your uh, blatant ins you know stupidity you know, it's not real hard to be considerate about other people if you cannot smoke in a grocery store i guess you could can you know contain your illegal smokings to the privacy of your own property or maybe the inside of your house but i think being in public is pushing it a little too far and i don't see that going on where i live now, Freetown, there is no freaking law there. You know, you do what you can live with, and people understand that. So there tends to be a minimal amount of violence, and I just got along with it. Every time I went there, it was uh, peaceful, tons of people, drinking, smoking, carrying on, eating, conversations, you know, sitting by the water, having to, just taking it easy. And then on the other side was the city where everybody was trafficking and hustling and making money and busy crowds, elbow to elbow. So I don't know how to explain that part because it is not legal, but yet they do it. And everybody that goes on the property has that privilege to either pass it or take it. It's not like forced on you, you know. <laughs> You're free to do whatever you like. And then you cross the street. You go into Copenhagen. Five minute walk. And it's a whole different world. You know. Because we live with these imaginary boundaries. You know. They tell you it's cake. So guess so. Well, guess what? It's cake. Exactly. Grimner. I'm just. You know. Flat. Um. Grimners remind me, flash somebody. Anarchy doesn't mean no rules. It means no rulers. I know that. You know that. Anybody that understands this, they already know. It's the guys that, you know, 
that deny us the freedom to speak without their, you know, state government fucking branded judgments on every fucking word we say. Yeah. If you're against their government, they're, you know, you're automatically a target for the other side. And fuck, I don't know. I'm starting to just be bored of the whole thing. I don't want to recognize any of this crap. It's all nonsense. I mean, the older I get, the less important it is any damn way. I've pretty much done the traveling and the going to's and, you know, I've found somebody decent to uh, end up together with. So fortune kind of smiled on me where it didn't seem to smile on other people. But uh, I don't know if you look at it in terms of um, I, I, I would make the best of whatever life gives me. I'm not I'm not as fussy as as I may sound on the radio. But, you know, uh, I've rode, I've ridden the life coaster. I didn't direct it anywhere. It, it said, hey, go over there and see what's going to happen. And that's pretty much how it went. You know, a relative would invite me to come over and see him, and I'd go. Uh, I'd meet some new friend. Hey, let's go here. And I'd go. And now, at this point in life, wow. Now I've got all those memories of doing it. I don't, I don't need to physically do the the thing anyway i've got a head full of it and now now we're just trying to unravel the the ball of knots inside my brain with all the knowledge in it get it out see if anything works you know because things worked out well for me and i didn't take the traditional way you know like rob works rob works was in the military i tried all that stuff nobody nah so you're too uncontrollable. We couldn't. You're not going to fit. Well, as long as my ego was fed with that knowledge, too, the more people, the more authorita and grown ups and adults when I was in my teens that said that to me, the further toward that door I felt they were helping me get to escape them. You know, it was like, hmm. I think I'm being spared something because these people keep rejecting me <laughs> but, <laughs> but I don't know you know it's all well, what I always say it's all how you look at shit because the same you know the same things that please one person completely disgust the guy sitting right next to him same thing two completely different reactions um who's right you know it must be a cake come on it looks like a cake well it doesn't smell like a cake well we'll deal with that when it comes time to taste it <laughs> then we need a volunteer Ooh, who's gonna volunteer to taste the cake i don't think i'd do it i'm not that uh i'm not that concerned with uh testing things out so for their safety value for other people to enjoy you know like some kind of lab rat hey speaking of that isn't it funny how kids are kids are being paralyzed and maimed and they're croaking after they get these you know vaccine shots at the doctor and uh People bitch up and down. They got lawsuits up the wazoo. Billions of freaking dollars are supposed to be being passed back and forth, and the the manufacturer of the of the vaccine makes profits, and the stock market. May, everybody's making all this profit while people are croaking and being maimed. <laughs> You know, but you can't sue the sh people that gave you the shot. <laughs> well, who, what do you do? Well, they do have, sp I guess they got certain courts you can go to if you can afford the legal system. Mm. 
Oh, and I do mean that completely to afford the legal system because at a certain point of legal system, they just want money. They want to drag that shit out as long as they can to squeeze every penny out of you because the more time you waste in court, the less time you can be productive. Think about that. Look at all the time people waste in court on crap. Fuck, Donald Trump's been dodging court. <laughs> He's. I wonder how many open cases he's got sitting in the White House, the President of the damn United States, and the guy's less honest than uh, I don't know who. I they're all the fucking same. Who you can't say he's any worse. Off. He's no worse than Hillary or Obama or Bush or Reagan. It, same. It's all the same shit. But we're still, even me, we're taught to separate them somehow through their, you know, their ID badges. Well, he's not a Democrat. Well, he was when Hillary was running and being a senator and all this other shit. And he was giving her money. They were great friends through that, I'm sure. <laughs> I think Bill ran the camera when they were doing the three-way with uh, Kissinger. But that's just an ugly rumor it was never verified with research <laughs> rumor <laughs> oh rob works is posting vax propaganda in overdrive as vaccine autism link confirmed well the the sad thing about being alive <clears throat> is to me there are so many armchair quarterbacks out there in the world that they they know the game inside out, you know, and they know all the stats. They know all the numbers. They know the rules. They can look at a game and predict who's going to win by the lineup and all this stuff, and they're pretty smart guys, you know, but they'll get their kids vaccinated because the state said they had to. So, you know, there's smart and then there's wow until you did that i thought you were smart i still think they're smart but what what i really believe about it is the indoctrination the fear of the state will overweigh well well maybe that kid just got sick because they were a weaker you know weaker uh what do you call them race <laughs> nationality <laughs> <laughs> one of the word games we play you know because like the my folks the jews ha, 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 we are the chosen fucking ones baby don't mess with the jews and you know you you legally you can't mess with the damn jews and wow i think it's pretty bad for a, a country that you know make america great and all this kind of crap but you got to bow to Israel before you can be great. That's got to sting. Just, I mean, even Denmark doesn't have to bow to it. Well, maybe they do. Let me check into that. i give you an update on, here, write it down on my notes here. Does Denmark bow to Israel? Hmm. Because everybody else does. Israel is the, uh, they're the only nation state above international law. They can do whatever they please and you can't fight them. So, I figured, hey, if you can't fight them, if they're winning, I'm going to be one of them. <laughs> Where's the loyalty to my country? I'm not going to be patriotic. I'm going to survive. Which, you know, all those rights and all that crap we were fed. I remember being fed all that crap. And the reason today, the biggest reason, not because I can go on the radio and this isn't freedom of speech. Freedom of speech to me is when you ask a person a question that they have led you to believe they know the answer to the question. And then when you ask it, they tell you to shut up. And it starts out for some people as young as, I don't know, nine months. And other people don't ask a question. They get told to shut up till they're older. But 
hey, some people start talking faster than others. But yeah, uh, you know that joke. Uh, you spend the first two years teaching your kid to walk and talk, and then the next 16, tell him to shut up and sit down. Well, yeah, Grim, but I, I, you know, I don't want my wife to to be all mad at me because now I got one more thing to mock her about. Because I'm a racist. I love being the Jew in in the Jew game. You know, I'd rather be the Jew in the Jew game than the not Jew. Unless the Jews were losing, then I'd be like, hey, I'm not Jewish. <laughs> I don't know. I, yeah, I, uh, Rob works, Grimner. I'm just as disgusted in the long run with the politics here. They're so wasteful. You know, there was 50 things they could have did with the money they used to upgrade the train station that uh, I just thought it was, um, I don't know, unnecessary. But it wasn't up to me. I don't vote. I don't have a say in all this. But I did hear other people complaining about why did they do this when there was other things that needed to be done. So who knows. But now they've got the, that main pit, bit of the street. The last two, I don't know, maybe two months they've been down there working, digging it up, doing something. Who knows what. Electrical, plumbing. and Who can you imagine? I haven't even been bothered to ask Cirque what it's all about. I just ignore it. Probably the city life, you know, where out of sight, out of mind, because by the time I get to the house, I forgot they dug up the road 10 minutes, you know, back up the walk. Don't even care. Yeah, I know, but of course Denmark bows to Israel. But damn thing is, I'm not Danish. My wife's Danish. Cirque's very Danish. I think she likes being Danish. <laughs> I I don't know if there's such a thing, but uh, you know, in the uh, expression of your, you know, your words and your culture, you're identified by that. People see you and they go, "Oh, you must be from you know this place, that land." Funny thing, I was watching a link on Minds today about this poor girl. She came to visit somebody in Germany, or she's German, and they, they were traveling. Anyway, there's three of them, and they get stopped, and she had her hair in uh, braids. And they asked her about her political views because of her hair was braided. And that is what the <laughs> certain behavior of a certain wing of political people is. I mean, this this is written like in 1940 or something. <laughs> And the poor kid, she's right there. You can see her. She's just shocked. She, you know, she's a young girl. She couldn't be but 20, 25 maybe. But, yeah, they stopped me and they made me this and made me that. And I've never been through this before. Just like an American. <laughs> no different. You know, hey, they stopped me and searched me. And what the hell? What they? You know, this is me back in the 70s with a, another kid. And I got him in some trouble, and he'd never been arrested before. So we had to get picked up by the police for something, and he was talking about it. And they were checking everything and looking for bombs. It was horrible. <laughs> and he wasn't exaggerating. He was just you know, saying his side of it. But the cops are pretty, uh, I don't know. They're, uh, they're like a fungus. You know, they, they've been mold, but they've been molding. <laughs> <laughs> I keep reading that line over. Somebody types something fast. Uh, yeah, I know. I gave them plenty of ammunition. Yeah, because fucking country's a country, man. It's just uh, it's barbed wire or rope. And I like rope better than I like barbed wire. Uh, Kate opened something. I got to look now. Grimner give it a giggle. And what did Miss Kate? Uh, it's something I can read. Wars in Syria, Iraq, and Yemen now over. ISIS paychecks st stop due to shutdown. CNN. <laughs> that, that is funny. <laughs> wow. Yeah, if they collapse the economy, will the wars continue? <laughs> I mean, think about it. Will these guys go to war if, if they're not going to get... Of course they will. 
Why wouldn't they? Just got to feed them and give them drugs. They do their job just like they're supposed to. Nothing will change. Collapse economy. Don't collapse the economy. Uh, what else is there? I think there's two choices. Either end this freaking war business and shut it down, which nobody's going to do because it creates too much money, or deal with it. <laughs> what is deal with it? I can't for the life of me outside of like two or three people on the Real Liberty Media, I never find anybody that actually supports it. You know, And anybody on the Real Liberty Media tonight that openly supports military action in the Middle East, for example. That's just an example because the U.S., and I'm from the U.S., so I'm proud of all this. Uh, we've been just destroying everything in our path for about 200 years give or take out of the 230 that it's been a legitimate country you know spend most of that time just invading and pillaging and stealing someday it will become common knowledge what the civilized world has done to Africa <laughs> And all these frauds, diamonds, and gold, and this, the oil, all these great advancements for mankind. They always blow up in our face, you know. They make five families a shitload of money, and everybody else has to go to work. And now you got to work more because, well, you need more money. <laughs> yeah, they're going to take your house. <laughs> oh, they're going to take your car. Help, help. The bankers are coming. And that's what the fear is. And I think the, uh, I don't think anybody lives outside of that basic, you know, oh crap, the bank could foreclose on the farm and put us in the street. You know, hmm. And you'd think in a world with the abilities that we have and the technology that we've got, we wasted on sex bots and trips to freaking Mars, right? Here we are. We got the internet. All this knowledge can grow food in any climate. Buildings made out of hemp. Uh, hempcrete, for example. Unbelievable. Anyway, but what do you read on the news? You know, the internet, the links. Oh, shortages. and Oh, corrupt governments and... Here, my, I think my favorite one about this, the latest crap that they like to garbage about is the deep state. And the reason I mock the deep state is because it, it's all state. It, it doesn't matter if it's deep or shallow or middle of the road. State is freaking state. How, how, do, you, how do you separate state by a, you know, an additional word? How, that doesn't change anything. Maybe, maybe it could be that the folks that tell us what we hear tell us a lot of shit. You know, a little bit of truth, a lot of shit. Little, little bit of more truth, then some more shit. A little bit more truth, and by the time it's over, you can't remember the truth from the shit. So, what do you got? You, know, you got a lot of people going out here in the world, right? Repeating all the garbage they learned about climate change, greenhouse gas effect, CO2 emissions. I mean, they just made shit up and then stupefied everybody saying it's bad for you, which is not illegal to lie. It's just, I don't get it. it instead of just being honest with us as a society the people that run shit they pay the people that make the laws write the laws so that they can break the laws and maybe they'll suffer a fine in 20 years when the whole thing collapses on them but they've had 20 years to live good so what do they care and then where does that fine money go to <laughs> 
<laughs> the government's going to, the government, the crooks of the crooks, they're going to fine you in fiat. What? I don't get it. It's it's too ignorant to explain. You know, it's like a very, it's, it's a bad lie that it's, it's just common, but. Wow, if you tried to do the same thing that the government does to you, to the government, guess where you're going to live? You're going to live where they want to put um, Miss Mrs. Clinton's ass. Well, they want to put all over there. But they'll be happy if they just put her ass in a cage. I think that would be enough. Then they could charge the Republicans a buck a piece to see it on pay-per-view. Hillary's ass in a cage. You know, ten ninety-nine on sale till further notice. Anyway, wow, what a world we're in tonight. But let's see, what have I got my notes here? I have. I got a question for you folks out there in the real libertymedia.com chat. I did pretty good with the. Uh, other things have been chatter chattering about. Got the got them posting all kinds of crap about Denmark. And you know, country's a country. Ah this this is the one I'm sitting in at the time. But to all you folks out there in real liberty media dot com chat land, what is smart? Because I was taught to believe that smart was the ability to repeat or to reproduce to come back with the correct answer and as I've gotten a little older a little wiser I started to think that smart was uh, questioning the answer and maybe not to change anything but just you know sometimes its cake isn't enough. What's it made out of? You know, what's the next question? Why is it that in life today we're so easily satisfied with one question? Uh, how much is it? Twenty dollars. Okay. Not what? Twenty. Yeah. There you go, Grimner's. Uh, he's all over it. Hillary's ass in a cage on sale. Twenty percent off. Well. See, in my mind, this is how I see it. That that woman is absolutely evil, rotten, terrible, whatever your negative uh, explanation word is that suits you. That's what I think. That woman is just, has not, she's got no good in her to exhibit. She's a completely bad person, right? So, got this idea of her. Then... All the things that she's done in her dealings and all the results we've endured through it, uh, that should be punishment enough. You know, the, the mental wavelength of being hated so badly by complete strangers <laughs> over your actions. You know, they're not baseless like, oh, I didn't like their album. They suck. No, this is a little different. This woman bragged about murdering um, Gaddafi <laughs> and Gaddafi whatever he was or wasn't th didn't deserve what the United States did or his people but this is what the U.S. does and they lie to the people they that support it they don't tell us the truth about what they're doing and then you get re you know results 20 years later two million Iraqis were killed by the United States England and France and when all these countries that are all involved in this big oil it's an oil scam to steal oil and yeah, keep these um <coughs> keep these other people off of trading off the the petrodollar they were losing control it's probably all over by now and they found some way to to work around their, you know, their misunderstandings, or I don't know, maybe they haven't. They just keep. How can you bomb pl twenty years, destroy and fight? Uh, w what's the point of all of it? Doesn't seem real to me. You know, it almost to the point of um, illusion. <laughs> if I pay attention to that, well, I'll never think about why the important things over here, like 
Wow, the Admiralty card. Ooh. What about those nine relics that sit in the SCOTUS and rule against the people? And everybody goes along with this crap. Why? Oh, it's the highest court in the land. And uh, you know what? The highest court in the land should be the one under the roof you're sitting in. And all that go government crap, you know. Fuck. When does it ever actually come into play into your daily life in the damn first place? I don't know. The the way the the way the presentation is, you know, how you, you see life when everybody's like a drug smuggler, a murderer, a rapist, a guitar player. What, aren't there any just normal people left that, that blend into the crowd and don't necessarily stand out all that much? Or is everybody now so special they represent a group? And if you see it that way, you get what I'm getting at. That's the point. Split us up into these tiny little fractions that always disagree about something. And what that ensures is that we're never unified against them. But there's this little group in France that's trying to straighten that problem out. And they're going to use money. They're not going to be violent. Um, they said they're going to do a, a bank run Saturday. And take out as much cash as they possibly can in protest to immigration. Well, you know, what is it Miss Mary will say all the time? Vote with your dollars. Okay. And this is also credited as a non-violent protest. So, there shouldn't be any of these damn, um, what do you call them? It's the guys with the armor out there. The military-looking police. The mob control people. What the... That intimidating group of thugs shouldn't be there because it's been stated this is a non-violent protest. But I'll bet you something goes wrong. Let's today. Today is Friday here in Denmark already. So you guys are still in Thursday. So it's like I'm time traveler, you know. And I live ahead of you. <laughs> I'm just just kidding. Oh, I get a bunch of holy rotten um, posts about that crack. <laughs> Let's see. The rescue of the Danish Jews occurred during Nazi Germany's occupation of Denmark during World War II. According to my wife, the uh, Germans didn't physically occupy Denmark. It wasn't neutral, but they used it for, you know, the beaches and shit like that. But they didn't, they occupied it with paper. There was no reason to use military force at the point they were at at that time. But, history being what it is, there's Wikipedia links. There you go, Rob. Please, Danish Jews. I'll bet you, in, in reality, if, if we were to be realistic about all this Jew shit, the only Jews there ever were were the ones born in the original Jew place, wherever that might have been. I'm speculating for you know for the sake of radio because hey, if it looks like a cake, <laughs> okay. So the country where the original and then it wouldn't even been a country; it would have been like the place, you know, the unnamed land of the Jew. Then why weren't these people black? Or if they were, then why are we not black if we're Jews? Something seems to be have gone horribly wrong. And I can't identify it. But, you know, if you go back in time far enough and you figure out the oldest histories that we've got are definitely in off-white colored lands, people. Uh, you know, we're pigment was <coughs> of a darker persuasion yeah 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 like that <coughs> hey i was trying to be funny was didn't work but yeah like that you know the uh, darker people well then it strikes me that hey the jews must have been a bunch of darkies but we'll save that for a dork table when somebody wants to come on and fight about it so we go back to my notes and ponder something new or maybe something else. But 
yeah, well, I asked you guys, what what do you think being smart is? Because I think being smart is questioning an answer that you're not satisfied with and seeking something beyond, you know, what satisfies everybody else. Well, maybe that's not good enough for you. But if you speak up, then you get all these other people bitching because you're, you know, rocking the boat and creating trouble. Because, you know, who are you to want the truth about something? You know, settle for what you get. Stand in line. Wait your turn. Be a good citizen. You know? And whatever you do, don't ever go past the internet to define a word. Because what did Miss Mary show, show us? Hmm. And Vince, you know, the words that we use today do not mean the same things all the time they meant even a hundred years ago. And hell, if you looked at the, like they did shit, Grimner's done it, uh, Moose Girl's done it. Well, Grim and Moose work as a cup, you know, as a team. So, of course, they did it together. Uh, but the thing on words, you know, how we've been taught this and it turns out to be that <laughs> shit Grimm's done radio for a long time with that same premises you know the the bait and switch we we might say it in different ways but i think in the end you know and the overall when you look at shit you go wow i wonder what that was about well because we got we had a bait and switch go on you know like the 911 sure terrify the whole fucking world all in one one day scare everybody and then then start screaming and and uh make sure it's just chaotic and insane and for as long as you can and then when you do get a little peace and quiet avoid talking about what happened no we'll give you a report we don't want to hear anything no you can't tell us we'll investigate <laughs> it's like Oh, yeah, and then two airlines out of all the fucking airlines in the world. There's a, a certain way to bet on the, the trades on the stock exchange. Uh, what do you call them? Shorts or something. I, I know Grimm knows all that stock exchange lingo. But you, what you do is you bet against a company. A company's going to hit a bad side. You're betting that they're going to... Well, these two particular airlines got a lot of that kind of business on that particular day. And if that's not insider trading, then, uh, what, a coincidence? Oh, yeah. All the rich people knew that those two airlines were in to take a shit on that day. Hmm. Boy, it must be nice to be rich, you know, because you can see the future. You know what's going to happen. And all those poor people down here, we all have to be surprised <laughs> and see it on TV. <laughs> but they already know. So, let's see, where do we have to go? Because, man, I'm telling you, I saw I saw a cake that looked like a building. You know, one of those uh, TV channels or on YouTube. Well, it's surfing the YouTube, and they have people that do all kinds of uh, artistic, incredible shit. And cakes and every you name it, they build it, they cut it, they, they cook it. <laughs> I've seen pancakes that look like people's faces. I mean, there's some incredible talent amongst us, right? And as people, we harp on all the negative shit. Oh, the gossipy, girly crap. Yeah, it, well, I was even reading some of that tonight. Some gossipy, girly shit. This guy's wife nonsense. and I don't know. But... You know, it is arrogant to pay for your own imprisonment, so you might as well be on welfare. Think about it. <laughs> do, you, do you prefer to pay for your own pr imprisonment? Well, if you do, <laughs> it's probably the best way to go. But we're, we're, I don't know if you guys know this, but we're in an open-air prison at best. And I agree with that completely because of all the times I've had to produce a passport or travel document. Because when I was growing up, hitchhiking, we didn't 
didn't need any of that to cross the state line. It was just a sign in the road. State line. Whoop. You're in the state now. You cross the line. Now you're not. Boom. Now you cross the state line and you got this guy in a suit with a badge and, you know, he wants to search you or put you through this x-ray machine. Um, to me, that's barbaric, you know, to be uh, accused with no, there's no reason to accuse you of nothing. You just walk to the place. And, but a requirement is to use their service. They get to abuse you physically before you can go. Wow. So looking at it from that perspective, kind of gave it a negative light. You know, TSA, fuck's sake. They've never found a terrorist in a whole time they've been using TSA. And then they just say, see how good it works. Are you kidding me? They search and they search every everybody. It's stupid. If you search everybody, you're going to find some reason to stay in business just by coincidence. But what you're not going to find is idiots that are trying to blow shit up. Or who's to say they don't hire some actor to go through the motions and get arrested and spend some time in jail for a certain amount of money. I mean, why not? Look at the shit people do to make money in the first place. That's legal. Lawyers, um, doctors, bankers, creditors, all kinds of nasty... Well, then there's all those good jobs that people have that we... Uh, I don't I don't know. We some people look down their nose at workers. Me, I appreciate the garbage people. Go, wow, man, I'm glad somebody is willing to do it. And if they get paid good, well that's even better for them because that's not a good job to have. Depending on the perspective of the worker. I would prefer not to do that. So I feel lucky that there's people out there that are willing to do it. The sad side of it is they weren't they weren't uh, encouraged to pursue anything. So now what what they've done with society is they've made the shit jobs pay well. So if you don't go to college, well, there's really not much you're going to get out of college anymore anyway. Um, those people are being replaced with computers, so you're going to need anybody to do anything but labor in a few more years. So I guess the idea to keep you dumb kind of works out in their benefit. So, but then again, somebody's going to have to be able to fix the computers that operate all the cash registers at Walmart. You know, whatever the hell it is. The um, self-serving machines have to be manu you know, maintained by a crew. I don't think they could just... Whoa, there I go blinking off again. I wonder what that is. I huh. I'm starting, maybe I'm communicating with the mothership and I just don't know it. Anyway, tonight's ramblings have been, oh, the usual from here to there to the other place. Uh, nothing special going on in Denmark that I can tell, but the French have really got my attention. I'd like to, uh, cause France, and according to the written history too, all this big shit always starts out in France. And if you go back into the America thing, far enough. Jefferson spent a shitload of time in France. So, you know, all these countries, they've got their they've got their hooks in other countries. Whether whether you admit it or not, the the reality is still look around you. Oh, and I got a joke for you guys. Here, let me read read this here joke I found on minds.com. <laughs> the joke an Israeli doctor says, In Israel, medicine is so advanced that we can cut off a man's testicles, put them on another man, and in six weeks, he's looking for work. The German doctor says, Oh, that's nothing. In Germany, we take part of a brain, put it in another man, and in four weeks, he is looking for work. The Russian doctor says, Gentlemen, we take half a heart from a man, 
put it in another man's chest, and in two weeks, he is looking for work. The Canadian doctor laughs. You all are behind us. A year and a half ago, we took a man with no brains, no heart, and no balls, made him prime minister. Now the whole country is looking for work. <laughs> that was that was this particular joke, it says here, actually won an award for the best joke in a competition held in Britain. And I liked it because it kind of fits the stories that you read about the politics of Canada. So, oh, Rob works, yeah. I will open up. I didn't see that till just right now. Yeah, I do. Yeah. Hold on. Oh, did it? I don't have any. Oh, maybe. No. Uh, I don't know. Eh, look, I'm going to enjoy my pipe. Let me look at my... Uh... Oh, tonight on 20% off on this here podcast, I'm going to officially... For everybody that likes this stuff that I do, I accept the failure of society. I mean, I accept that it's a failure. I don't accept the results of the failure of society. But I, I see what it is. Oh, I did get something on the wire. Hold on. What, what do we got? You want to come on, Rob? Let me give Rob a call and see if he's got some chitter chatter to do. Might be an incomer. Hang on to your shorts, folks. Well, I guess not. He's not ringy dinging and No, I guess not. I must be all confused tonight. But yeah, it did sound like a wire notification. Who knows? Uh, I thought maybe you had something you wanted to get on uh, the radio tonight. But... There's always Saturday. Feel free to drop by the dork table and point out the flaws of the world because I accept the failure of society. And I don't think too many other people do. They they just go with it. Now these French fuckers, not so much. But look what it took, you know. They had to be pushed out of their culture, whatever that was, to, you know, fight back and then fighting back was hey wait a minute all these kids are getting their asses kicked water cannons cops beating them with batons flares who knows rubber bullets uh and then you read on the internet and these people want the uh the system to use live ammunition against the protesters so guess some people are violent i i don't know I'm not there to see it, but yeah, sorry about the bell, everybody uh, that's out there in Radio Land catching my crazy show this week, because I don't know, I was a little hmm, offset earlier today, you know, people, how do you put it, words can just uh, get to you at a certain, I guess, tolerance level. My brother's like that. My brother likes to talk shit to me. And I don't. I don't like him to do it. But he does it. He thinks it's cute. And I think it's just a way to be a prick. And uh, I don't know. People cross that line. And that's just the way I feel until I'm done with it. But there's so much hate in the, uh, you know, in the text. On the chat rooms everybody's pissed off and upset and uncomfortable and out of pocket fighting. I do it. You do it. We all do it. Well, why wouldn't we? But the few times, ah, there goes, what the hell could that be? That's too much fun. Well, I'm not doing anything on wire. I'm going to close wire and see if that don't stop it. Hey, cause I'm making all kinds of blinking sounds like, uh, I don't know like a something and anyway uh yeah my mind's not uh what do you call it eh, settled oh you were testing it oh i don't mind rob no i wanted to do the the this 20 percent off thing you know because i'm 
I'm probably about, according to society, at least 20% off, you know, because the things that I see society just, wow, they just don't see them that way. And there's nothing you could do about it. It's just life, you know, like it, hmm. people don't seem to understand that, okay, there's a car and a car has thousands of freaking components you know this that and the other to assemble it together to make it what it is but you know that car would operate just fine without a lot of the parts that it has okay well somebody that's not mechanical might not understand that well you got to have this and you got it no you don't got to have you got to have an engine and Got to have a drivetrain and wheels, maybe something to sit on. <laughs> but but uh, I destroyed what? What kind of car was that? Some kind of German car. Uh, what is it? Uh, I haven't driven cars in so long. I forgot what it was. But it's one of the more popular German cars. My father had an old beat up one on his. Uh, he had this little farm kind of property, and I uh, just drove that car all around having fun messing with it and uh it didn't have this and it didn't have that but it it drove so society has gotten so nitpicky and ruly and cody do this and do that and for your safety and blah fucking blah you know everything's gonna kill you so you need to be insured and controlled wow what a scam you know, just because 10% of your population is a bunch of complete idiots, why do the other 90% have to always suffer for it? <laughs> it's not fair, I tell you. I'm speaking up <laughs> for, for the oppressed drivers of the world. You know, because there are, there are people are on the road that, you know, don't eat sandwiches while they drive, don't do their face makeup at stoplights <laughs> shit like that self well there's a lot of people on the cell phone still i see that here when i'm walking in my little walk to, oh, this is really cool i love this shit it's it's got to be like nobody could love this but you know what <laughs> i'm out there i don't have a car to be fucking with you know, I don't got to lock anything. I don't. I just got a little bag on my on my back, right? To hardly notice that. <laughs> anyway, <clears throat> if I want to stop and look at something, there you go. But the people that are driving cars and they're on bikes, those people have a hard time, you know, because they're they're important. They got places to go. Shit's got to happen. <laughs> so, so, you know, they don't want to miss anything. And me, I. I'm not in a hurry to get there, so <laughs> I don't know why it's making me laugh, but it just works out for everybody. My laziness comes out in such an obscure way that I consider walking being lazy, you know, because you're the one with a car. You go do all that important shit. I'm just walking <laughs> somewhere, you know, and beyond the ego thing of me first and then you, unless there's six or seven cars and it's freaking cold and I want to cross the street, but I got to wait for all the cars. <laughs> That's annoying because I'm spoiled <laughs> rotten by the, you know, the lack of traffic. You couldn't, you couldn't cross the street where I'm from. You know, you had to wait for the lights to change or smack. You'd have got run over. There was that much traffic. And at certain parts of the day, it would slow down to you know, half. So it would, you know, at an average, it would take about 15 minutes to drive five miles. And in those days, where the cities were five miles, you're, in, you're two cities away at that point sometimes. And it wasn't uncommon for me to have friends in cities five, 10, 15 miles away from where I lived. Because the place was so spread out, you're bound to get involved in something in society that was in a city that was 20 miles away. You just drove it. You know, it was normal. That was what we did. And 
there was so much to you know to choose from at the time too i think you know i don't know other people have fond memories of their earlier years but i sure did i enjoyed the the most of it i think and tried to carry that in into my adulthood i've had more fun than i've had bad i think you know, the, if there was a scale to weigh it on, oh yeah, fun would go, and not fun would be just a little bit, you know, just enough to know what not fun is. And uh, I've uh, took a few losses, like family, you know, my, my mommy and my daddy are, are gone. But it wasn't anything, uh, you know, tragic and out of nowhere. But I guess just because somebody's old, <laughs> I guess I'm getting there. <laughs> I'm not there yet, thank you. But close. Well, getting. Well, now Grimner's gonna get all pissed and Rob works, huh? Now I guess I'm not that that old because I'm your age. But I think there were uh, principles that we were raised with that say grim grim's about my age mary you know rob works and we were cowboy tech maybe but cowboy tech's got that demeanor of you know you you you're well mannered to a degree you know like even me i i don't spout off at everybody i only spout off at a few people not even a few people (laughs) just just one and i'm not sure it's people i think it could be a bot. <laughs> I'm not completely positive. But who is to know? Anyway, so what is there next? Um, have we ever discussed how peace is not profitable? So it's not an option? Hmm. I know I've heard people, other people comment on it. But as a topic and I don't really have much to say about that because I'm physically living in a state of peace there's no confrontation surrounding my uh, immediate area you know even me and Cirque get along 99% of the time you know as far as uh, living inside the same building with one person Somebody usually loses their temper with me. <laughs> yeah, I make her mad every now and again. But say like 99% of the time I don't. <laughs> and I'm laughing because uh, we have character traits that just follow us wherever we go. No matter what we think, no matter how we think we're behaving, the other person looking sees it different than the person doing shit. And I guess maybe that's what makes life go round is the uh, the illusion of my unique perspective of what it is. When my unique perspective kind of sounds ridiculous in another way because then how could it be different than the other guys? How can we not be seeing the same thing? <laughs> See, so all these games work on me, you know, and they play with my head because I can see with proof that you can show me and somebody else the exact same thing and we'll describe back to you, the shower, some two different things at times. And it won't be a 100%, it'll always be that way. No, there's another thing. <laughs> People think things are, yeah, they fall within the boundaries of this and this and this. So, well, no, there's there's outside variables like dumb, doodah, luck, coincidence, chance. <laughs> if these things didn't exist, why would the people that wrote the language bother to label them? <laughs> They must be real. I mean, crap. Uh, I don't know. Either it's all real or nothing's real. And I'm leaning towards the... Nah, it's... It, none of it's real. It's all in my... The, the way I want to perceive 
it is what it, I get. So whatever fuels me, you know, whatever food I intake and information I let let in you know, and absorb and use, while well, the parts that you reuse, those are the good ones. Think about all that useless shit that they taught you in school that you never repeated twice. But if somebody was to ask you what the difference between traveling and driving is, you could explain it to them in a few sentences. It wouldn't take long. You know? I mean, anarchy is just society made simple because I don't feel like Grimm's the leader of the world because he runs the Real Liberty Media. Nor do it, but he's the guy that does it, you know. So if he did something in a poor fashion, I think I'd say, hey, Grimm, you know, you, you need some help with this. But that's not the way it worked, you know. I'm the one that, that came in not knowing. He already knew. So there's nothing, you know, hmm. I didn't mean it. I don't, uh, I just think that whoever it is doing whatever they do, they're already doing it regardless of how I feel about it. There, there you go. So whether I criticized him or didn't criticize him or praise him or whatever the fuck you do, it, it only, uh, it can only interfere in what you're doing if you let it. Something happened today to me. And yeah, I I think I'm going to allow it so I can take a break from it. You know, now I've got an excuse to back off because eh, people get too playful with me sometimes. I remember being in a bar and I had a close friend punking me. And then his friend tried to punk me. And I stopped him and I said, hey, sport, you know what? You don't know me well enough to talk to me like that yet. Why don't you knock it off? And he apologized and said, yeah, you're right. Well, Joey was doing it. Well, you're not Joey. So when shit like that happens, whether it's in jest or not, doesn't matter. Sometimes, you know, uh, people react to the moment. And I thought, wow, I haven't gotten pissed off over something so petty in so long. Maybe I just need to back off take a break from paying attention to the shit for a bit and that's what I decided to do and what I started out with was oh I was told to shut up so I shut up and clicked off the site and took off for I don't know 10 minutes when you did something for a minute made some tea or something then I came back to a, a more insult I went okay you went so there you go but you know, it's so unnecessary to do that in a public social sit setting, but I guess it had to happen, you know, because it did. But it looks like a cake, but it don't smell like a cake. So, no, this time I'm going to pass on it and uh, let other people do what I was doing and replace me with the other guy and... Enjoy yourself. I think that's what I would tell an employer. You know, you know, I have told people that weren't pleased with the job I did. I said, "Well, you want to do it? <laughs> I'll leave right now. I don't. I'm not in love with this job in the first place. So if you got complaints to make about it, bye." <laughs> and sometimes I didn't have a job after I said that and other times you know a man will be reasonable when he's he realizes that it's not about words it's about deed but sometimes see and this is the part where the electronic world changed all the fucking game right sometimes the written word or the verbal word or the word word however you hear or interpret the word it matters for a moment and I think my uh, my attention span has been cheapened by, you know, not trusting my gut. And I'm going to trust my gut 
and I'm going to do what I think I should do. <laughs> and I'm going to please myself, you know, and uh, that's pretty much my goal now. Because the electronic world will teach people, if they pay close enough attention, any lesson they need to learn. And they're right there in front of me. You know, I'm talking for me, just saying us and you. It's a flashy way to talk. That way, when I start my cult and I get members, you know, following me to salvation, I'll be used to <laughs> my cult. <laughs> I'm going to start a fucking cult. Right. That would be a giggle, wouldn't it? The Flash Somebody Cult. <laughs> what would our goal be? Wow. To uh, get along with each other and not be a pain in the ass. That would be enough. But sadly, I don't know how that's possible. Because, <laughs> you know, the design of the, of the modern day game, it's... It's uh, it's in the it's in the delivery of the rules. You know, the deceit is right there in front of me. To me, I see it. Other people, not so much. Hal Hal Anthony he explains it in a way that, yeah, I see the deceit and the the double talk and the misdirection. But if you don't address the person with the the right secret password. They can pretend to not hear you. <laughs> it's a game. It's a word. It's like knowing the secret handshake, you know. Ha I look at my tattoo. I've got the right, you know, the tattoo to the secret club, and that's where we, how we live. <laughs> nine nine relics on the Scotus people. Think about it. The supreme law of the land. Does it does it get any freer than that? <laughs> How much freedom do you want? I give you 20% off. If you join my cult, I give you 12 amendments to your constitution. And I'll let you write your own damn constitution. But you can't be Democrats. And you can't be Republicans either. <laughs> we'll have none of that political shenanigans. <laughs> Start new. Something different. What would be different? Let's see. Hey, you know, you got to realize, people, there are people out there, I may be just playing around, having a giggle on the, on the radio, but there's people out there that really do this sort of thing. They start secret initiation clubs and groups, and uh, they grow and pass them on to their kids, and their kids do the same. And the average guy doesn't spend a lot of time thinking about this stuff, Don't, doesn't realize... <laughs> How, how tight <laughs> you, these you're never going to meet these people they, they don't associate with us are you out of your fucking mind <coughs> they're encircled by other people so you can't get near them and they, they go nah that's not true okay see what happens when you um <laughs> When you try to go to the certain side of the airplane you don't belong on. And how there's no classes and everybody's the same. and It's a, you know, wow. We just get told these freaking stories. We've got rights. I have rights. Nobody's got any rights. I never had any rights. What rights did I have? Let's see. Freedom to travel. Well, I guess I did to a degree, to an age. And then it, it ended because the police started to interfere with it. You know, that's why that's why my traveling ended, because I got, I got busted for uh, being under the age of consent and being out of the state and all kinds. Of, it turned in a lot of paperwork, I suppose, for a lot of adults when I was doing it. But, hey... Life was life, yeah. and uh, things were so much easier, and people were a lot nicer. I remember, yeah, the crowd that grew up, you know, that was in their 20s when I was like 11 years old, 10 years old, 12 years old, they were a lot nicer than the uh, 
than I was when I was their age. But, of course, there was a uh, prosperous kind of air to the state still. Now, I I go back in history, and I, I think it began, it peaked in like 1968. And in something in 1968 happened, and things started to gradually decline from that point on. And I don't know if it <clears throat> if it has anything to do with uh, Richard Nixon <laughs> being the president or any of that, but it was that year. So I'm not saying it was political. I'm saying it was uh, a noticeable, in my history looking back, it's a noticeable starting point of a decline in, in the future of the United States as a, oh, grow up and, you know, get an education and do something with you. Now, here we are, 2018. Now, they got a trillion and a half dollars of educator debt. Debt. Now, not only that, but people might not think about this, but these universities are for profit businesses. They're, <laughs> they're making money. How do they make money? I, I don't even understand how a university could make a profit, but I'm not. I'm not the economist here. I, who would be the economist? Maybe money bags. Rob Works might have a better, or Grimner. Grim knows a little bit about how money was invented. You know, not invented. <laughs> invented. That was a good word for it, though. How it was created. You know, their origins of money, and and he's got a a good background on it. And Rob, I'm pretty sure does too. But what I'm thinking about. And then the, all the offshoots of all the traps were in, like, derivatives. Cirque knows all about the derivatives. I know what they are, and I've got enough of an understanding to go, holy shit, how did we ever get into this situation we're in when everybody else around expects unlimited growth potential? <laughs> more profits! I want more money! Well, they always want more money while the people that, you know, do all the work get less money. And it's been chipped at and chiseled at to the point of now there's like part-time employment and just all these stupid, uh, shitty games, you know, because of the government regulations and codes. And they've taken the slave market and just decimated it you you can't even earn a decent living trying to do something legal <laughs> i don't see um i don't see the future as looking very good they're replacing all the teenager jobs with robots you know out here they haven't got the automation in the store and i hope they don't i don't i don't want to deal with a fucking machine i want somebody that's alive to do it and if they're willing to do it because it's part of their you know programming to go on to what they're doing gonna do any damn way i'm not hurting anyone i'm just contributing to the local food support you know supply because not using them is the same as using them you know because in in society, like Mary says, I like to quote her every chance to get, you vote with your dollar, you know, your dollar, your yen, your peso, your e, your Bitcoin, what, whatever it is, you know. But for some reason, and I don't understand how this works because we're using all these debit cards, right? I've been using a debit card for years and years and years. Well, the debit cards basically replaced cash years and years and years ago. So, uh, what's all the big hoopla about, you know, using the debit card or not using? It's it's already ingrained into shit. And what the system is going to eventually do, it, it looks like to me, I don't know, they'll pull it off, but it's as though they want to eliminate fiat currency so that if you don't have a card, that's your problem. Then, then it isolates people, you know. They just have a different kind of card or they'll be criminals because there won't be any <laughs> other way 
you can't grow your own damn food. Well, you sure as hell can't feed people that don't have food. The state will get involved and arrest you. Because uh, you have to have licensed. Yeah, you have to be licensed and gifted and inspected and injected. And then you can be neglected and go to work. <laughs> I don't know. I tried to make a joke out of that. didn't work out too good. Let's see. Ah, uh, here we go. Give you a little background. Rob knows currency was originally created by the goldsmiths. The original currencies were warehouse receipts, hence the term pay on demand. You could take it to any warehouse bank and redeem it for gold or silver. Right. Once upon a time, what even the even the currency uh from the 50s pay to the bearer in demand but they took those all out of circulation and they replaced them with the in god we trust dollar bill baby then they started doing fractional reserve banking which is simply making more warehouse receipts than they had gold slash silver exactly and you know to the one guy or gal out there that's never heard this crazy show before <laughs> poor person no i'm kidding i'm just having a weird show tonight um hey if you didn't know that about money there's a lot more to know I'm telling you this uh this life we're in is so chock full of deceits at at levels that you 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 just expect you could trust them medicine i didn't you know until it happened i had no idea of the fraud of medicine and my mom had been uh, a victim of the this medicine shit her whole life but nobody ever recommended remedy uh natural remedy to her i didn't know about it didn't I, where am i going to learn i'm a city boy didn't you know it didn't come up in school um i didn't spend any time in the country or with country you know folk in that period of my life so I didn't know anything about it and by the time I did find out it was too late to act you know people get in an illness uh, let's just use the terms of Ill an illness that'll kill you it has a like say a beginning and an end you know there's a time limit on it it will kill you between this day and that day and so you have a limited amount of days and if you get over halfway through that even if you're uh, repaired or saved, <coughs> there's no way to recover back to 100%. You'll always be short because you did more damage than you could ever repair. Now, this is an observation I made. I don't know if you agree with that one or not, but uh, all my injuries all healed, you know. So, hmm, I think there's just a, uh, I think a lot of it has to do with your health. If you're ill, you the more ill you are, the sicker you are. And the less, you know, ill you are, the more likely you're not going to be ill. But then again, who, you know, again, I don't know this, hmm. Let us argue with ourselves tonight on 20% off. Because on some situations, I can I can see both sides of the story. And, you know, it depends on which side you're looking at to decide what side to go with. And sometimes I think they both fit. <laughs> you know, or one size doesn't fit all. You know, there's just that way of looking at it for me. Let's see, what is Rob saying? Uh, based on the idea that only a percentage of people would actually redeem. Yeah, that's why I kept saying about the French on Saturday. Because the fractional reserve banking, that's in France. So, you know, the public's not stupid. They know. They know they've only got 10%. Or if they don't know, they're going to find out on when they give out 10% and that's all there is. So, now they're calling it a non-violent protest. And 
I think hitting the bankers like that, it's kind of an interesting way to do it. But, again, you, the ripple effect, you don't know what direction it's going to go in. This, this is the kind of part of life, I think, that uh, I've never been through before on a level where I was paying attention to the event when it was taking place. Because, you know, what was there to see? 9-11. Okay, that was a hand job. Uh, the bank failure in 2008. All right, fucking vey, here we go. Fractional reserve banking at large. I mean, is anything that we see, even though the results are devastating, violent, and fucking people die in them, the results are only real to that level. You know, the story that takes you to the part where you go, yeah, well, people got killed and this happened and buildings fell. Right. Well, that stuff's all real. The other stuff that made it all become a reality isn't real. And explaining that to somebody else. (laughs) Wow. You know, no, it's a bunch of guys on a plane that did that with box cutters and they hijacked the plane and the plane to have magically cut into this. Oh, please. Flying the fucking thing into the building was the amazing part to me. The building falling, that was magic. <laughs> no way that plane knocked that building down. I remember thinking that on the day I saw it. But, hey, everybody else. No, 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 no. If anything, I thought it was an accident. The guy was trying to miss the building, but couldn't. But accidentally somehow turned into it. I, You know, my first impact. My vision. And then as the day went on, I, I was other people are interacting and talk, talking about it. And I went, what? Terrorist attack? What? what? How many? They said, four. And I said, four, not 400. I said, what kind of shitty terrorists are they? Well, so, of course, over time we realized, well, it was an act of terrorism, yeah. And, well, the people they accused of doing it, (laughs) they weren't that sophisticated. They couldn't have pulled this off. So they they dumbed down the explanation of what they actually did to the buildings to make them fall so that people would think planes did it. And they they even they went as far as to make up story. I mean, they were just uh, creative writing 101 had nothing on this 9/11 report. But even my in my last few years, I've rarely had the, uh, the opportunity to ever talk to anybody about it except for chat rooms because I've been away so long. And uh, I don't see why anybody, like in Denmark, why would they have an opinion about what the how the Twin Towers were taken down? Or would they? Hey, maybe that might be an interesting thing to pursue. How do you, I could ask my, if I got a friend that... Uh, drinks up at the bar and uh, she's an educated woman and her her husband uh, tends the bar so she goes in there has a few but when he's working sometimes when he's not they go in together and uh i think i could ask her that question <laughs> and get it excuse me having a little rough throat tonight i think i could get an interesting answer out of him but Time will tell. You know, you never know what I may or may not do in life. But there's things I've avoided for the sake of uh, peace and quiet. You know, it's like, uh, I, I know enough of this crap, right? Got all this knowledge and, oh, we got screwed here. And, oh, we're straw men. And, oh, wah, 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 wah. We're slaves. And, oh, it's all horrible. Wah, wah, wah. But... During all that time, I had a few perks that made up for it. <laughs> you know, where, uh, yeah, it, but it could have always been a lot worse. We, I had a good, uh, I had the best of, of the times that I was there, I think, in the States. You know, the, the shackles hadn't completely latched on. And I had just probably left before they tightened them. You know, that's hindsight. When I look back on uh, 
how life went because hmm, opinion <laughs> I don't know I tell you I don't know a whole lot of stuff but I have a whole lot of opinions about a whole lot of shit and and the reason I th really think their opinions is because they change sometimes you know there there's really not a lot in my you know thinking that's definite uh except that whatever we see and whatever we've been told is usually the opposite of the truth you know that's not nobody disputes that i don't see a lot of opposition to that shit but what i see is a, a real lack of uh input to solve the problems but i see a lot of criticism about the problems now the problems these people criticize are problems that are made they're gar they're problems created by government in the first place <laughs> without a, a government operating these problems wouldn't exist people say well then we would all be a bunch of uncivilized but no that's not true the laws are so complicated and there's so many of them you create the mess that you have with them <laughs> The less laws that you have, okay, use me as an example. I don't know what the Danish fucking laws are. I can't read Danish. So, I must rely. Whoop. Whoa. <laughs> but I must rely. Ah, thank you for bearing with me on that. That hit was a little bigger than I thought. Anyway. I must rely on common sense <laughs> to do things. And sometimes I don't show it. I hit the pipe too hard. Live on the radio. Didn't think so <laughs> when I was doing it. <laughs> Surprise. <coughs> life can expand you know <coughs> life kind of takes me wherever it wants to go and i always think i'm doing you know i'm gonna do this you know it's like tonight started the thing 20 minutes late <coughs> couldn't get my headphones together i don't know i probably clicked something anyway grimner come on and tampered with it for a minute and the next thing you know it was working then I did a half-ass show tonight and uh, coughed in your ear in the end of it. So, uh, for the, you know, I think this is my third episode of uh, my own personal outlook, you know. The way I'm seeing shit, not the news, and but some weird idea that crosses my mind on the day of the show. And then try to use it for a way to compare the other shit to it. And there's not a lot of folk out there in the world that see what I see. But, hmm, there's a few. I mean, I've noticed that, but, uh, wow, there's billions and billions of people out there. So, I'm assuming that there's a lot more folk that do think what we think. You know, the Grimners and the Rob Works people, you know, um, circles, and Miss Moose, you know, Miss, uh, Miss Kate, people that participate in it because they, you know, they don't want to, uh, live on a mountaintop fighting a bear for toilet paper. I understand that. That's not the, that's not the part of the game I'm talking about. I'm talking about the design of the game, not the, so much the players, Unless the player in it wants to be a pain in the ass and, you know, really make more of it than it is. Because as far as I'm concerned, it's, just, it's all words you hear, shit you see on a screen, and very little of it ever has any physical effect. It's very little to that. Um, but reputations, you know, you got to remember, too, we're, the minority... Uh, language on the planet we're like number four in languages there's three other languages that more people speak than English 
So, you know, we're not hitting we're not hitting a big crowd of of human beings in the first place if we only speak English. So there you go with that one. I thought I'd be funny at the end of my show and give you all something to look forward to. Learning another language. I would recommend Espanol. And especially if you're in the south of the United States because, well, that used to be the Mexican's land anyway and I think they're going to come and take it back. <laughs> if Trump don't build that wall, <laughs> the Mexicans are going to take their country back. Then what are you going to do? Hey, they might take Arizona, New Mexico, Texas, and then just leave California alone. Let it earthquake off into the ocean all by itself and then sink. That would be weird, wouldn't it? Anyway, so that's, I'm going to wrap up. It's, uh, it's been a wonderful Thursday night here in Denmark sitting, uh, reminiscing about all these crazy ideas because you know what if it looks like cake must be cake right uh or maybe not maybe it's something else you know because if the foundation is a fraud everything on top of it what could it be but a fraud or is it pot see here we go or is it possible that they can build the truth on top of a fraud Maybe I'll, I'll try talking about that one on Saturday if I can remember it. Anyway, this has been 20% off. I'm still Flash. And tomorrow is Friday. Well, it's my today, but you're tomorrow. Friday. We got, uh, I guess Miss Mary's still recovering. She has not got her voice back yet. Miss her dearly. I look for her today because I usually listen to her shows her Wednesday, the next day. You know, it's too late for me. I'm out here in Denmark. I be up all night like a 15 year old every night listening to. <laughs> anyway, but she's on tomorrow. Then uh, after the, after Mary, but she's not going to be on. So we got Grim and Moose Girl doing the Freakers Ball. Unless Moose Girl don't come. Because sometimes she's been going to these festives, uh, festivities. I think last time was a uh, dead band or something. She wanted to go hear him. So she let Grim do a balls to the floor show. But I think she'll be on t tomorrow night. Or tonight. <laughs> well, my tonight, your tomorrow night. And then Saturday I do a dark table. I know. Well, I think it's noon Eastern time. Then Sunday, Grim will be doing the blues in the morning till trivia. And then after that, Hal Anthony comes up with uh, Behind the Woodshed. Ha, ha, ha. And then Monday, Grimner's got his new, pro uh, his new program, um, Grim's Leftovers. And that's uh, 7 o'clock, 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Oh, sure. Thank you back, Grim. Kate, appreciate having a... <laughs> I like doing this crazy shit, you know, because sometimes it, it's just like a... It's like being able to write, but I get to do it with work, you know, without writing. Because I like to write, too, but this is way more fun. And uh, then Tuesday, I'm going to come back with uh, In a Perfect World and dazzle you with all my bullshit. So, this is me, Flash, Roger Wilco, over and outing you. Later. <laughs>